Well, so much for President Obama's plan to add another Republican to his cabinet. Just a short time ago, New Hampshire Senator Judd Gregg withdrew his nomination for Commerce Secretary. Gregg cited irresolvable conflicts with the administration, and namely that is the stimulus bill and the handling of the Census Bureau. But another critical issue in the portfolio of Commerce Secretary is trade. And with President Obama on record as having serious doubts about the proposed Columbia Free Trade Pact, we could be facing an era of less free trade, not more of it. Our next guest thinks that is a mistake. He is Republican Representative Peter Roskam of Illinois, and he joins us now from Capitol Hill. Congressman, good to see you. First of all, very quickly on the subject of uh, uh, Judd Gregg pulling his nomination out, do you have anything to add to that? Well, I think it's a real disadvantage for the new president. He had hoped to have a bipartisan leader, a Republican leader, a fiscal hawk, and a real disciplinarian from a financial point of view join his administration and give this new stimulus package that imprimatur from somebody like Senator Gregg. And obviously the senator looked twice and said, you know what, I can't participate in this in good faith. And I think it's a very dramatic setback for the new administration. Do you know if they had any disagreements about free trade? Well, here's my hunch. Um, I don't know what the nature is of those conversations, but I do know that when, when you have a free trader who is being come, asked to come into an administration and he sort of looks behind and sees the whole bat backlot tour of what he's going to be expected to sell to the American public, it seemed pretty clear to me that the senator became very uncomfortable with what he was being asked to pitch. All right. Well, there were a whole boatload of ironies today. One of them was that President Obama, this happened just as President Obama was speaking in Peoria, Illinois, uh, your home state, uh, at a Caterpillar plant. And ironically, Caterpillar is very much in favor of the Columbia Free Trade Agreement because they sell a lot of equipment. To Colombia, and of course, the president. The last I heard, he spoke out against it. Well, here's an opportunity that I think the president has. You know, in his inauguration speech, the president said that it's time to put away sort of tired old dogmas of the past that have that have hamstrung our politics. And clearly, the politics around the Colombia Free Trade Agreement is exactly that. If you look at how this could be. A company like Caterpillar spends an additional $200,000 on tariffs per piece of one of these large equipment, uh, large pieces of equipment. Yeah, we're looking, think by the about, way, we're looking at those large pieces of equipment okay, right so, now. You can see that in our monitor. Go ahead, Congressman. Think about if, 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 based on our tariff laws, we're able to reduce the cost of that by $200,000. What does that mean to Peoria, Illinois? What does that mean to families that just got their layoff slips? How many folks can you employ? for $200,000 per piece of equipment. Well, in fact, Here, the Cato Institute has actually tried to quantify that. They say that for Caterpillar alone, uh, experts were responsible for 6,607 jobs. This is extremely real, and here's why I think the president should seize this and should sort of shed the old arguments of his party, and that is this. This is stimulus that doesn't cost the American taxpayer a dime. This is making us more competitive for American corporations to sell in foreign marketplaces and to create opportunities. And I'll tell you, in the state of Illinois, the ramifications are huge. And as Cato Institute pointed out, you know, that's a nonpartisan think tank that came up with those numbers that said basically, look, this is all good all the time. And what happens is sort of this old bumper sticker mentality of old slogans from the past tend to hamstring some of these things. And I think the president can come in and say, look, we're going to take a fresh look at free trade. We're going to look at this as an opportunity for American workers, and we're going to advance free trade. In all Columbia. right. Well, I, you know, bottom line here, and this is sort of the elephant in the room we haven't talked about, is the president at least when he was campaigning for the presidency was highly influenced by some left-wing forces that can't stand the president of Colombia, President Uribe, because he has been very tough on Marxist guerrillas who these left-wingers have basically supported as much as terrorist activity as they've been involved with. This is a guy who's been very tough on the terrorists. He is responsible for releasing for the first time in years a lot of hostages who were held by these terrorists uh, because he had some really good SWAT teams. We're looking at, at an example right now where a woman congressman had been held hostage for about four years. There she is in the middle there, Miss Betancourt, uh, a tremendous success for freedom, a, a tremendous success of the military forces in Colombia. And frankly, this is really upsetting a lot of the left-wing supporters of the guerrillas here in the States. They've had influence on the president in the past. Will they continue? 
to have his ear as now he's, he's in the White House. Well, you accurately point out the success of President Uribe, who pulled Colombia back under his leadership, which was teetering on essentially a, a lost narco-terrorist state. It was almost gone. We had That's almost right. kissed it goodbye. But he pulled it back based on good leadership. He has created a dynamic economy. And this is an opportunity for our new president to reach out that hand, that openness that he talked about in his inauguration, and try and, try and create more opportunities, not just for Colombia, but more opportunities for folks here at home. Well, he was being fed, by the way, some terrible information, just flat-out wrong information about how Uribe had been killing more union leaders and had been killed in the past, when, in fact, it was absolutely the reverse. Union leader deaths and murders has decreased under Uribe compared to his predecessor. So uh, this president, our president, was getting fed really rotten information, and hopefully now he'll get better stuff. Well, and here's the other thing. Uribe not only um, did what you said, he went actually a step farther to the point that today in Colombia, if you are a labor leader or a labor organizer, you are less likely to be afflicted with any sort of violence than a member of the regular population. So this is a guy that's reached out in good faith and, and has created good things. But as it relates to our economy, this is a chance for us to have a sustainable, long-term economic growth opportunity with new markets for American products that help American families who are really struggling today. And it doesn't cost the federal taxpayer a dime. Good news for Columbia, good news for Americans. A good, it's good news all around. Let's hope he goes for it. Peter Roskam, thank you very much. Good to see you. Appreciate you being here. Coming up on deck. Thank you. We're gonna be